Hello traders, in this video I'm going to show you how I trade earnings announcements. Earnings are fantastic because they present opportunities to us, there's new information, and there's a price discovery phase that the stock goes through when everybody's trying to evaluate how the earnings came out, what the guidance was like, what the macro business conditions are like. All of that information gets disseminated in a very short period of time, and then when the stock finally gets to trade, we oftentimes see large price movements. Well, as short-term traders, be it day trading or swing trading, that spells opportunity. So I've tried to incorporate as many tools into Option Stalker as I possibly can so that we can nail down these very specific moments in time. So I'm going to show you pre-earnings searches that we can use, and then I'm going to show you post earnings searches that we can use. This won't be a really long video and this is a resource that you'll be able to go through a few times so that you can learn where to find these tools. Charting earnings dates. So this is a very easy feature that I added and you can see that if you hover over the E on the end of any chart you'll see what the futures or the projected earnings date will be. Now this is great when I'm trying to structure spreads and other trades, I can see exactly when that date is going to come. And if I'm an option spreader, I want to make sure that when I sell option spreads, I'm selling them so that the spread expires before that earnings announcement date. I don't want any surprise component. Conversely, if I'm an option buyer, I'm always trying to buy options that span that earnings date because those option implied volatilities are going to hold up better. So this is just a very nice simple resource that you can use whenever you look at a chart. You're always able to hover over the E and find out what that next earnings date is. Buy into earnings search. This is really, really helpful. Now, as of this recording, we've had a huge market decline, the largest since the Great Depression. So everything's out of kilter a little bit right now, but typically this search really, really works well. Right now with everything awry in the market, it may not be as effective, but I'm expecting by next quarter and the next quarter we'll be right back on track. So how does this work? Buy into earnings. What does this mean? I've gone through and I've analyzed all the different stocks and all the companies and I've taken a look at the price action two weeks ahead of earnings announcements and the stocks that are in this list, you'll notice that it's bullish. You can see the grayed area in the upper left corner. So this is a bullish search. Click buy into earnings. And these stocks have rallied two weeks ahead of the number more than 75% of the time over the course of the last 12 quarters. Now that's three years worth of data. I could collect four or five or 10 years worth of data and create the same search, but I'm finding that three years tends to be the sweet spot because I've got enough data samples. And I think that the longer you go back in history, the more skewed the data is and it's not as relevant to what's happening happening right here and right now with the company. So three years I think is a really nice database to collect. So like to reiterate over the course of the last 12 quarters, the last three years, when this stock has been within that two week window of an earnings announcement, it has a tendency to rally and it's done so more than 75% of the time. This is a huge statistical edge for us. And what I like to do is I like to bring up these charts. I'm not looking for a stock that's already made the move that's screaming to new highs and new highs. I want a stock that has formed a nice technical support level and is gradually starting to inch its way higher. And then what I like to do is I like to sell a bullish put spread below that technical support on the notion that with every passing day, that stock is more and more likely to gain strength and momentum into that earnings release date. Ideally, I can sell some out of the money bullish put spreads that expire before that earnings date. That's the ideal situation. Now you'll also notice that in addition to having this search, I can add some other criteria such as show me stocks that have 
good option liquidity so I would mark that box show me a stock that has a buy signal on a one hour basis or a two hour basis or a daily basis or all three if you'd really like to narrow your search results down and you just click through this list and look for those types of patterns but again everything we do is probability based and this is one way that we can really gain a statistical advantage so buy into earnings search and everything that I'm showing you in this video is available on Option Stalker and Option Stalker Pro. So in terms of pre-earning searches, search for future dates. Okay, well, let's take a look at how we might do that. In custom search, you would bring up our custom search matrix and you would click earnings date projected. So why might I want to do this and what would be the interest here? Well, if I'm a credit spreader, I like to sell premium inside of two weeks, meaning that those spreads will expire in two weeks. Well, what I don't want to do is I don't want to find a great candidate and then find out that, oh my gosh, they're going to be posting earnings in three days, four days. Now I got to go back to the drawing board because that trade's just not going to work. I've done that so many times I can't even tell you, so I finally devised a way to filter those stocks out. So in this instance, today is April 27th. What I would do is, since I'd like to get at least two expirations under my belt and give myself some flexibility on some expirations that I can sell, here I would have March 1st expiration and I would have a March 8th expiration. So the earliest that I would like to see a company announce would be the 11th. That gives me these two expirations when those options or that spread can expire worthless and so I nail down that beginning date the end date can be six or seven or eight weeks later I really don't care so much about the end date but when I start getting in my search results I know that I can sell credit spreads on these candidates at least a week or two out without having to worry about earnings announcements if I wanted to collect some more samples and some more candidates I could use 18th of May as the first date and then extend that farther date out the second date you know six or seven weeks further out so that will allow me to bring in lots of candidates I also like to mark has weekly options because I like to sell weekly option spreads that's another thing we can do and then we mark off option liquidity I typically like to have an option liquidity of zero or better. Those are going to be excellent candidates for spreading. And the search doesn't stop there. Those are just the beginning criteria that have to be met. Then I can go in and I can look for relative strength on a daily basis. I can look for a trade signal on a daily basis. I can uh, mark off ADX if I'm looking for some bullish momentum. I can use the major moving averages. I can do whatever I want, but at least I know that whatever stocks I come up with, I don't have to worry about an earnings announcement blindsiding me in the course of the next two weeks when I have that credit spread on. Pre-earnings options. If you go into Option Stalker, Above the charts, you'll notice a tab and it says pre-earnings options. This is a really, really useful tool. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't like holding over the earnings announcements, but I know a lot of people really do. And I built this resource with you in mind. If that's, if that's how you like to trade, this is going to be a fantastic resource for you. So what this search does is it looks for any company that's going to be announcing earnings after the close today or before the open tomorrow so during the course of the trading day I'll take a look at this table and if I glance down I can also use this as a resource to just tell me who's reporting after the close anybody big and I can quickly take a look at it and see if there are any companies that I might have a position in that would be my last chance to get out if I don't want to hold over the number and I can evaluate what impact these announcements might have on the market tomorrow morning. That's how I personally use it. But if you like to trade the number, these are all arranged according to option liquidity. So there's your option liquidity rating on the far right. You can see 
that these are your most liquid picks. Now, the way that I would use it is we've taken a look at what the expected move is, and we know that based on the option implied volatilities at the money. Where's the put call? Uh, what are, where's the put trading? Where's the call trading? Add those prices together. That's the expected move for the stock in terms of percentages. We also know, because we can go back and calculate this from our database, what has been the average move after posting earnings. Finally, we can go back and take a look. Again, I use three years as my sample, 12 quarters. I feel that to be plenty of time and still relevant. And you can see how many times the stock has exceeded those expectations. So for instance, for British Petroleum, you have an expected percentage move of 10.82% you have an average move of 2.3% and the number of times that the stock has exceeded that percentage move in the last 12 quarters is 0%. Huh. Well, how would I use this information if I'm trading that number? Very easy. I would be looking to sell straddles or strangles. I want to take advantage of that inflated expectation right here, knowing that the stock rarely makes a move like that. Now, oil has been all over the board in the course of the last month or so. Would I want to be doing it right now on BP? I don't know. That's a question that only the trader can answer. So it certainly sets up well from a probability standpoint. And then we've also got all sorts of other data that you're able to find here. You can see what the recent volatility is for the stock. You can see here that it's 5.19%, still way below that 10%. You can see the put call ratio. So bearish slated, meaning that there is a larger number of puts purchased than calls. You can see what the group performance is, but this really starts to fill in more after earnings season really gets underway. So there haven't been a lot of energy companies that have reported. But I take a look at how all the companies within that group have fared after reporting earnings the day after they've reported what's been the percentage gain or loss. So you get a feel for how the, the group's performance has been after reporting. Again, very, very useful information, especially if you've got a hot uh, group. You can see a lot of tangent plays and a lot of follow through. You've got the call open interest, the put open interest, and the at the money implied volatility. Now, I haven't really talked about what if you're an option buyer, and I don't have a lot of candidates in this particular day that set up well for option buying strategies, but let's say that you had really good option liquidity on TAL, and let's say that this percentage were somewhere around 66%. Well, then I would know that 66% of the time, the stock has exceeded that expected move, and that may set up well for buying a straddle or a strangle. Now, I'd also want to make sure that I've got some decent uh, or low option implied volatilities at the money, so I'd want to check that as well. But that's how we'd use this pre-earnings options table. Again, if you trade earnings and you hold over the number, there's not a better resource than this that you can use for that decision making. Try and get every statistical advantage that you can. Earnings tonight. This is a very easy search. What it does is it shows us the companies that are going to be posting earnings after the close tonight or before the open tomorrow. Again, this is another way for us to make sure that we're out of positions where we may have some exposure. You'll see that the option liquidity rating for these candidates here is greater than zero. So it's a very, very simple use, but a very useful tool. Post earnings searches. So what do we do once the number is out? Well, charting earnings dates, again, right on the chart, you can see when the company has previously announced earnings. In this case, you can see A, that means after the close. And you can see another A here, that means after the close, they reported earnings. So this bar right here is the first time that that stock was able to trade. 
and here you can see that was the first day that the stock was able to trade so you can go back you can take a look at how the company has fared over previous earnings announcements strong after earnings man are we going to be using this search over the course of the next two weeks right now we've got 112 of the s p 500 companies reporting this week Earnings season climax is next week, so this is going to be a really powerful search for us. Let me show you how it works. So you can come down to the strong after earnings search, and when you click it, all of these companies have announced earnings previously. And there, here you can see J&J &J is highlighted, and this is a chart of J&J, &J, and you can see there's the earnings announcement. You can see the B, meaning it announced before the open. And because that was before the open, you can't see this candle because it's obscured. The stock didn't do much of anything. It was a real yawner. But it started to gain traction the next day and the next day. And in fact, I highlighted this in one of my daily videos. And I suggested selling an out-of-the-money bullish put spread below that $100 strike price. And man, did that trade out work out well. So here's what we're looking for. I want to see a stock that's gapped higher after the earnings announcement. And I want to see a stock that has been able to hold that earnings gap and is trading above that earnings gap. And sometimes, in fact, quite often, the stock may have a lackluster reaction, but it shows its true colors a day or two or three after that earnings report and then that's when you can spot that opportunity so this is a fantastic search to use again we're looking for that gap we're looking for that positive reaction and we want that stock to maintain that opening gap and then to start grinding higher so really really good search and again if you've got a lot of candidates like we have right now you can add extra filters like that h1 buy signal h2 buy signal d1 buy signal any of these filters will help you narrow that list. Strong after earnings. We're going to be leaning on it. We're going to be selling a lot of out-of-the-money bullish put spreads after the number, which incidentally, option implied volatilities are very high going into earnings reports, and a lot of that premium gets sucked out right after the number, but it's residual. It sticks there for a day or two, so we're still able to take advantage of that uncertainty that's in those option premiums we can search past earnings dates well why would we want to do that and how would we do that well we would go again into the custom search engine and we would go down and we would mark earnings date previous so as I mentioned today is April 27th and if we went two weeks previous we would go back to the 13th as our start date and we would leave April 27th as the end date. So now I'm going to be able to take a look at every company that's announced earnings over the past two weeks. I don't like to go more than two weeks because this price discovery process, it lasts about two or three or four days. And then all of a sudden the stock kind of starts to settle in on what it's going to be doing. So I don't find it to be of too great a value to go back more than two weeks. But once I have this nailed down, then I can start looking for opportunities after the number and I can use some of these other criteria to help me find the stocks that I really want. Help me find a stock that's recently reported, has relative strength, has a buy signal. Again, stocks might post their number and let's say in the case of the strong after earnings search, there we're looking for that gap higher and for that stock to maintain that gap. but not every company does that. Sometimes you get a negative reaction the day after. Netflix did that, posted a great number. All of a sudden you see the stock pulling back the next morning. Well, it was probably overpriced. Well, the expectations were too high. And so if you just went off of what the initial reaction was, you missed the trade because two, three days later, Netflix really started to show some strength. And that's when we knew that there was a trading opportunity. So in the last two weeks, show me who's reported. Start putting in your other criteria that you'd like. Heavy volume, relative strength, ADX on a shorter term basis to look for short term momentum, pushing it higher. 
There I would use ADX on a 15-minute basis and a 30-minute basis. That would tell me that the stock is really picking up steam today or yesterday, and it's recently reported. So that's all really good information for me to be able to find. Having that trade signal as well, again, you can mark a variety of different time frames, M5, M15, M30 if you're a day trader, and longer term if you're a swing trader. Very, very useful search. Again, we're trying to get earnings out of the way. We don't want to be blindsided by them. And these companies have already announced so we can go back and we can find that strength and ride the coattails. So that's another way that we can trade earnings, e-reaction. Have you ever asked yourself, gosh, I wonder what this stock does after it reports earnings? What's typical price action for this stock? Well, we have a tab again above the charts and you click e-reaction. And let's say that Facebook just announced earnings today. Well, I could go back and I could see how it's performed over the course of the last four quarters. Now, this is a five-minute chart, and it is the snapshot of the day right after it announced. So if Facebook announced after the close the previous day, this is the next day and how it responded to that earnings announcement. And you can find patterns all the time. And if I looked at Facebook, I would see, okay, it tends to gap higher, pull back, gapped higher, pull back, gapped higher, pulled back. Okay, you know, it tends to be pretty weak after the earnings number. Here you can see it sold off, bounced a little bit, and then spent the rest of the day down. So maybe the expectations are a little bit too high going into the number, and the stock has a tendency to pull back. Well, this would be very, very important if I'm thinking I like to buy Facebook. I really love their earnings announcement. I think this stock is going to take off like a rocket. I take a look at this and go, wait a minute. It gapped up big. And it's got a tendency to pull back. I better hold off on that trade and wait for that support to form. Then I can decide if I want to go in and take that position. So again, this is called e-reaction. It's for every stock. Once you see the uh, earnings announcement, this is a great thing to go in and check and see how the stock is performed. After earnings, this is a great search. It's really easy to use. And I'll tell you that when you've got earnings announcements coming out left and right, you have to nail these stocks and you got to nail them in the first 10, 15 minutes because after that, the move is gone. And the stock starts moving so quickly that you're hemming and hawing. Gee, if I buy it here, am I going to have the rug pulled out from under me? Well, you want to be on these trades and you want to be on them really fast and really early. So what this search looks for is it's looking for a stock that announced earnings the previous afternoon or before the open today. So to reiterate, stock announced after the close yesterday or before the open today. This is a search I like using before the open. And as soon as that opening bell rings, boom, I'm on the after earnings bullish search. And on the bullish side, this stock is above the prior day's high and it has great option liquidity and it just posted earnings. That's how I found Abbott. And you can see Abbott here. That's the prior close, the dotted line that I drew in. There's the SPY. Here you can see the stock gapped higher. The B means it announced earnings before the open. And then it pulled back and it checked that prior day's high. So it was on the list, probably came off the list very temporarily. But then as soon as it got back above that prior day's high, I started to see it. I saw it get through the high of the day as well. And I saw the market pulling back hard. That was my clue that this stock wanted to go higher. I bought it here, sold it here, made a really nice $2 profit on that trade. I find these all the time. And the point is, is you've got to be on these stocks instantly. And this is a resource that allows us to find it very, very quickly. Now, for everything that I've shown you, I've shown you the bullish side of it, but there's a bearish counterpart. So if I'm looking for bearish stocks, I've got a after earnings bearish search. I have a week into earnings search. I have a week after 
earnings search as well. So we're looking for trades constantly on both sides of the market. Earnings announcements are an opportunity for us. We need to have very efficient ways for us to navigate those earnings announcements and to find opportunities once the number is out. So I hope that you uh, take advantage of these tools. If you've not tried Option Stalker before, this is a great time to do it. Take the two-week free trial. We've got earnings season starting. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, earnings season is probably a month to a month and a half long. And by the time you get through earnings season, you get about a two or three week lapse. And then the next thing you know, the next earnings season is starting. So earnings season is almost never ending from my perspective. At any rate, that concludes this video. That's how you can find these earnings opportunities using Option Stalker. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.